Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to our Wednesday night uh, Bible class and Bible study. We hope and trust and pray that uh, God has been good to you and that God is blessing you. And uh, we pray and hope that we could say something tonight that will be encouraging to you and it will be motivating and that will help us move forward uh, in the promises of God. And so uh, at this time, uh, if you will, bow with me in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day and your blessings, Lord. And Lord God, we pray and ask you to be with us, lead us and guide us. We ask you for your direction. We ask you for um, your uh, vision. We ask and pray, Father God, that through everything that we do and everything that we say, that uh, tonight will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We ask you, Father, for the ones that need prayer and the repentance of sins. We ask you, Lord God, for the ones that are dealing with hard times and bereavement. We ask you, Father, for those that just um, are going through some struggles in their lives, dear Lord, and we know that you are everywhere and you can do all things, and we ask you to bless them. And Father, we pray and ask you to be with the ones that are saddened and uh, uh, heavy-hearted, dear Lord, on this evening to bless them. And Father, we pray and ask you that as we study your word tonight, that you will uh, let it resonate in our spirits. And we ask you, Lord, that you will bless us and guide us in all things that we do. Lead us, Father God, forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our shortcomings. And this is our prayer, and we ask in your loving son Jesus' name, amen. So tonight we're going to look at Exodus chapter 1. Uh, Exodus chapter 1, and, and so I want you to turn with me there. Uh, if we look at some things there in Exodus chapter 1, and uh, we try to discover uh, some things from God's point of view. Exodus chapter 1. Uh, when, we, when we look at uh, verse number uh, five is what we'll pick up. And all these who were descendants of Jacob were 70 persons, and jo for Joseph was, the, uh, was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brothers, and all the gener that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the, hand was filled, uh, the land was filled with them. So I want us to understand something that uh, as we move forward in the Lord and as we move forward with God, uh, that when we look at the story here in Exodus and how it starts, and when we look at uh, the children of Israel, we see the 12 patriarchs here, and we see where Joseph is in e uh, Exodus or in Egypt, and we know the story of that. And, and so we find ourselves here where some miraculous things are beginning to happen. And there are also some, some, some bad things happening. And, and Joseph and all of his, his brothers died. And, and those generations are, are died out. And so there's some things that God wants, there's some nuggets here God wants us to understand and God wants us to get. And that is that one is that, that death is a part of life and people are going to die and people are going to leave. And, 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 and the church still has to be able to move forward. Uh, uh, death can be many forms and many fashions. As we studied in Genesis, uh, we, we know that in uh, Genesis chapter 3, when God talks to Adam and Eve and he, he tells Adam that the day you eat of this, you shall surely die. Uh, God was speaking in twofold of death. Death is a separation. That's what it means. And so God was saying to Adam that the day you eat of this, this tree of, of good and knowledge, of knowledge, you shall surely die. And so therefore, God was talking about a physical death that now the body begins to die. And we, we must understand that just like it is here with the 12 patriarchs and with Joseph, that, that the day that we are born, our bodies begin to die. And so when we, when we look, and sometimes it's hard as children of God, sometimes it's hard as Christians to understand why bad things happen to good people. Sometimes it's hard as Christians to understand why good people are suffering, why good people are uh, uh, Christians that's trying to do right and trying to, stay faithful and trying to serve the Lord, still end up getting cancer, still end up getting diseases and still end up dying from, from diseases and things. And it's because that when God talked about death and the separation uh, and the man would begin to die, then, then the forms of diseases and stuff, that's, the plagues that's in this world are all part of sin, all part of what happened, all part of man having to die now. And so because of that, uh, we are not exempt because we are Christians. We are not exempt because we are uh, uh, morally good. We are not exempt because we try to do the right thing because death comes to all of us. 
death lays at all of our doors at some point or another. But even in death, we must still push forward. We must still move on. And so that's where we find here with the children of Israel. And, and, but, but I want you to understand again that death is also not just only is it a, a physical death, but there was a spiritual death God talked about in Genesis with Adam. When he said, you shall surely die, death, uh, sin separates us from God. That's a death, but separating us from God. And so as God talked to Adam and said, you shall surely die, there's a spiritual death that takes part too when sin comes in our lives. And so I want you to understand that uh, when we look at the story here in Exodus and we talk about uh, Joseph and his brothers, the 12 patriarchs, and we, we, we see this and they all die and the generations die, uh, everyone of them generations die, uh, there is also something that we have to understand that what happens with the church. And that is that there are things that happen in the church that separates us from God. There are things that happen in the church that separates us from one another. There is things that cause death to come in our relationships, death to come into who we are, death to come in to our spiritual growth and our spiritual uh, 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 equities. And, and so we must understand and, and realize that just like here, that we still got to carry the torch. We still have to move on. We still have to push forward even when death shows itself, even when death is present in our lives, whether it be physical, whether it be spiritual, whether it be emotional, whether it be mental, whatever capacity you may be going through and dealing with right now in your life where you feel separated from something and that's, that what you are separated from drains you, that what you are separated from causes you to lack the desire to even serve God sometimes, to even work hard for the Lord, to even put God first. And so I want you to look at some things here as we talk about this, as we discover this in that not only did the 12 patriarchs die, but everyone in that generation died. But I want you to see what the Bible says here uh, in verse number seven. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. So even in the midst of death, even in the midst of their leaders, even in the midst of people before them leaving, they still was fruitful and they multiplied. And now you got to understand this, that, that the reason why they were able to be fruitful and multiplied is because the example that was set before them. The example that was set before them. It's important that as children of God, as mature Christians in, 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 the, in the body of Christ, that we are setting examples for those coming after us. It's important that not only we're setting examples for those that are coming after us, it's important that we are setting examples for those who are weak walking with us. And so that is how they was able to multiply. That is how they were able to continue to increase is because the examples that were set before them, the foundations that were set before them allowed them to, to, to be able to, to grow uh, in, in the work, in the admonition, in, in the status of the Lord. And that's what survived, that's what helps us today, is that we have to be examples, not just in word, but also in deed. We have to be examples uh, uh, in what we do, and we must understand that, that we are not exempt from the things of this world. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so God doesn't take us and put us on an island by ourselves and keep us away from diseases, to keep us away from financial hardships, to keep us away from broken relationships, to keep us away from death or any of those things. He doesn't do that. What he does is he takes us and makes us examples to the world. He takes and makes us examples to other Christians and, and those who are weaker among us. He takes that and he makes us examples so that we can continually grow in, in, in the body, that we can continually have folk that don't mind serving God, even when it's not popular, even when it's not conducive for themselves, they still keep working and in, in serving the Lord. And so when we look at this, the Bible says in the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly. They were fruitful. God wants us to be fruitful in everything that we do. In the church, he wants us to be fruitful. In our lives, uh, he wants us to be fruitful. 
in all things that he may be able to get the glory. Uh, you remember the story when Jesus went to the fig tree and it didn't bear figs. And Jesus said, cut it down. Because it wasn't being fruitful. It wasn't producing what it was designed to do. It wasn't doing what God created it to do. And in our lives, we got to ask ourselves, am I being fruitful? Am I producing the way God wants me to? Am I living to, to what God designed and created me to do and created me to be? And so they were fruitful. And because they were fruitful, they did what? They increased abundantly. They grew. The numbers grew. The numbers grew. When you are fruitful, church, when we are fruitful, when we are faithful and we are fruitful to God, and we, we follow the examples set before us, biblical principles, biblical examples, then we too can be fruitful. We too can be increased and the numbers can increase. The numbers can swell. The numbers can grow. That people may take note. They increased abundantly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. So not only were they fruitful, not only did they increase, but they became mighty. They multiplied. And when you, when you think about that term multiplied, I want you to think about uh, when, when you're infested with gnats or when you're in, infested with insects or, or things like that and how it just seems like they multiply. And it's not just one or two of them, but it's, it's a multitude of them. And they're just swarming around. And, they, and, 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 and if, you, if you ever know anything about uh, uh, being in the country or, or being down south and in them, them hot summer days and you, and you outside and you eat some good watermelon or you eating some good peaches or cantaloupe or something that you like, some fruits or some vegetables that you like. Well, you know, not only do you like them, but them insects and, them, and, and the flies and the gnats and stuff like them too as well. And it seems like they multiply and, and you can't even enjoy that which you are trying to do, that which you are trying to eat, that which is meant for your enjoyment. You can't enjoy them because of the insects, the multiplication of, of what's going on. That's how we need to be as children of God. When we are fruitful, when we are intent, when our intent is to be mindful of, of the kingdom of God and what God has in place, when we put the kingdom of God first, when we put God first in our lives and we become fruitful, we become we can multiply and we become mighty. There is strength in our numbers. There is strength in us being in unity. There is strength in us being joined together. There is strength in us working as a team. And the devil knows that. That's why he works so hard to keep us separated. That's why he works so hard to tear, tear relationships apart. Because he knows there is strength in numbers. He knows that if you work together, if you join together, if you are knitted and tied together, then the devil knows that you can be more powerful than you can as an individual by yourself. Because where I'm weak, someone else may be strong. Where, where, where I may not have the, the knowledge, someone else may have the knowledge. Where I may not have the wisdom, someone else may have the wisdom. And, and if we can work together with my wisdom and their wisdom and my knowledge and their knowledge, and it's not about me, but it's about us and it's about we, then we understand that it's about God. And we understand that we can do mighty great things. But when we get caught up in our own uh, agendas and we get caught up in our own biases and our own opinions, and we lose track, then we can't be fruitful and we can't multiply. But we have to work against the devil and help understand that if we can work together, if we can hold things together, if we can make things stick and, and intertwine so they can't be torn apart. And if you tear one part, piece apart, it tears the whole thing up because we're knitted together. It, it, it's kind of just like uh, any of you got a, got a sweater, your favorite sweater. It's winter time now. I enjoy wearing sweaters during the winter time and, and I like nice sweaters. And, and, and so, but, but what happens if my sweater gets a hole in it? It may be my favorite sweater, but it gets a hole and the hole gets right in the middle of the chest where you can't cover it up and you can't hide it. Because see, there are some times when we have sweaters or we have clothing that, that the tear is somewhere where we can hide it. The tear is somewhere where you know, okay, it's on the bottom of the, of the sweater so I can tuck the sweater in and nobody even knows it's there and I can continue to wear my sweater. Yeah, I know it's there, but I can continue to wear it. Or I can stitch it up a little bit and I can continue to wear it. 
But what happens when that hole, when, when that tear is right in the center of that sweater and it becomes so big that you can't hide it? It comes so big that no one, no one, uh, uh, you, it can't go unnoticed because it's woven together. And so when it starts ripping and starts pulling, you ever pull the string from a sweater? What happens when you pull that string and it, and it just starts unraveling the whole sweater? Because th that string is tied into all the other strings. And they all woven and, and working together. It makes a beautiful thing. But what happens? What happens when there's a hole in your heart? What happens when there's a hole in your spirit? Do you try to cover it up? Or do you ask God to mend it? Do you ask God to heal it so that you can be fruitful? So that you can do what God designed you to do, what God created you to do. Everybody has something to offer. Everybody's created in a unique way in order for God to bless this world and to bless the church. And if we're not operating in our, in our uniqueness, if we're not operating in our power, if we're not operating in our design, then we can't fulfill our duties to the church, to our families, or to the world. But when we look here, and the Bible said they multiplied and they grew exceedingly and mighty. They grew exceedingly mighty. When we work together, when we put our forces together, church, we can be a mighty force in this city of Charlotte. We can be a mighty force in the surrounding areas and in the state of North Carolina and, and in the world. We can be what God intended for us to be if we join together and work together. And people will take note. Look at this. Verse number 10. Or verse number, I'm sorry. Um, look at verse number 8. And now there arose a new king in Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to the people, look, people of the children of Israel are more than the mighty, mightier than we. Come let us uh, deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And, and it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. And go out uh, of the land. Now here, God has blessed them. What, what the new king of Egypt didn't understand. Well, well let, me, let me say this. Let me back up for a minute. Is that we have to understand that God has already prepared the way for us to be successful. He's already prepared the way for us to be fruitful and for us to multiply and for us to grow mighty. He's already preparing those things with, with the children of Israel. He had already prepared them for the change. So, so it, it didn't matter as much that the king that came up didn't know Joseph. So, so that protection, that, that net, that, 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 that bush, that protection that they had around them, it didn't matter when it was removed. Because, see, they, they, they operated under the protection of Joseph. Remember, Joseph was the right-hand man of Pharaoh. Remember, he was in Potiphar's house and all these things. And so his brothers came down and, and, and God used him for, for the, when the famine came into the land, God used him to be able to save Israel. And so they, they, they come to know him as a protector. They come to know his relationship that he had. And it's always good for, for somebody to have a good relationship with someone else so that you can be, be, become a protector and a provider for those less fortunate, those who are weaker. Joseph was that for the children of Israel for so many years. But it came a time where God says, I need to remove the protection now. Because I need you to operate in faith-based principles in me. And sometimes as God, if God leads our protection, 
I want y'all to hear me now. If God leaves our protection, if he gives us, leaves our security, if he doesn't mess with our security, he doesn't mess with our protection, then sometimes we get complacent. Sometimes we don't necessarily trust God the way he intends for us to. Sometimes our faith doesn't grow the way that it needs to and the way it was designed to. Because we have that protection. So we don't have to challenge ourselves with our faith anymore. We don't have to grow closer to God anymore because we have that protection. And so there are times when God will remove the protection around us. But when he removes the protection, he will not remove it until he's prepared you to handle the change. See, somebody right now, God removed your protection. God removed your protection and you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how you're going to handle it. You don't know how you're going to operate and how you're going to move forward. Trust the Lord. Continue to have faith in him. Continue to be fruitful in what you do. Continue to work with others in a healthy manner. Continue to let God be the God of your life. Why? Because he's prepared you so when he took your protection away, you were going to be all right. And when God is preparing you, trust me, somebody is taking note. Somebody good and somebody bad. The Bible said, Paul said, where I will to do good, evil is always present. Isaiah says that when we came into the midst of the congregation, the devil came in in the middle too. And so always understand the devil's always taking note of what God is doing in your life. And so, but when God removes the protection that you feel is giving you your security, it may be your job. And God removed you from that job. Because you were putting more trust in that job than you was in, in the Lord. It may be that it may be that car, it may be that house, it may be that relationship. You put more faith in that relationship that you had than you did in God. And God has now removed that protection from you. Because he needs you to have a personal relationship with him. He needs you to trust him. He needs you to grow in your faith, in your walk with him. But he's prepared you so that when he move, removes the protection, you're able to stand. So this new king comes up and says, I don't know this Joseph. I didn't have a relationship with him. That shows again how important it is for us to build relationships with one another. For us to build relationships with folk outside of the body of Christ. Because it helps us when we have healthy relationships. And it helps God when we have healthy relationships. He says, come let us deal with them shrewdly. Look at verse 11. Therefore they set a taskmaster over them, afflicted them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh's uh, supply cities, uh, Python and, and Ramses. Now, I want you to see this. If we, if we wrap this up, I want you to see this. Joseph and everything that they knew about him, their protection had been gone. All the patriarchs are gone. This is a new generation's coming up. God's trying to build their faith. See, there, there are some folk right now that God's trying to build your faith. And, you, and you've been sitting on the sideline in the church watching other people work in the church. Watching other people lead ministries. God is now calling you to duty, calling you to task. God is now calling you saying, this is your opportunity. Take advantage of it. Come and work. But then look at 11. They set taskmasters over them, afflicted them with burdens. They were being afflicted. They were being burdened. They were being hurt. They were trying to kill their spirit. They were trying to de destroy their relationship with God. They were trying to destroy their integrity and their character. They were trying to destroy their will to work and their will to succeed. The devil still does that today. He wants to destroy our will to succeed, our will to be faithful to God, our will to work for the Lord. Don't let the devil work on you that way and win over you. Verse number 12 gives us the power that we need. And that's why I want to leave us with this evening. 
but the more they afflicted them. Watch this now. The more they afflicted them. Church, we may be afflicted and there may be folk that's, that's trying to afflict you. There may be things the devil's trying to do against you. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Don't tell me that in 2021, the church can't multiply and grow the way it always has. God is still the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And, and so therefore, we understand if we be fruitful, if we multiply, if we work, if we deal with our afflictions the right way, if we deal with our burdens the right way, no matter how much the devil tried to push against the church, no matter how much the devil tried to stop the church, we can still multiply, we can still grow. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. We can grow this church and we can expand these walls and we can save this city if we stay fruitful, if we work together, and if we trust in the Lord. May God bless you and may God keep you. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we pray and ask you to be with us, to guide us and to lead us. Father, we pray and ask you that if we uh, meditate on this study that we had tonight, that it will be pleasing to you, but it will be food for our souls. Father, we pray and ask you that you will help us to be fruitful, help us to multiply, help us to grow through everything that we, anything we may go through. We ask you, Lord God, to help us keep our faith in you. Father, we ask you to bless this church, bless your decree, help us to be the church that you would have us to be, do the things you would have us to do that you may get the glory. Father, we pray and ask you that in all things and through all things that we, we will honor you and we will grow and we will love you. We always bring glory and honor to your name. Father, forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our shortcomings. Lord, let your grace and your mercy rest and rule in our lives until the next time we meet. This is our prayer. We ask it in your loving son Jesus' name. Amen.